All right, let's get this stream going. So, here's the deal. We are going to talk about what a person needs to live stream, from basics to advanced. And uh, thankfully, the entry point to live stream is a lot less money-wise than what it used to be. When I first started uh, about six years ago, I had $5,000 wrapped up in equipment easily um, to, to live stream. I was treating it as a business, so, uh, you know, I, I took it very seriously. I still do, but it's, it's a hobby now. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go over today for uh, this first time. I've really done a uh, just chatting, and uh, rather than just shooting a YouTube video, uh, and posting that, you know, my recordings for my streams go to both Twitch and YouTube. So we're kind of killing two birds with one stone. Um, that way, if anybody has any questions as we go along, uh, feel free to chime in and ask those questions. Okay. So that's what today is all about. We'll see how long this uh, this goes. If I'm getting questions and everything, this, this could go for quite a while. Uh, if you are new to the channels, because I'm currently on YouTube and Twitch right at this very moment, multi-streaming, uh, I'm Grudge. And uh, yeah, I've been doing this for uh, like six, seven years now. And uh, I picked up a lot of knowledge along the way, made a lot of mistakes. And I, I, I like my current setup. Uh, it's working well for me. That being said, let's start out with what is my setup? Okay, so I've prepared a little word pad here. Now, currently, I'm using a Ryzen 9 5950X 16 core CPU. Power color uh, 7900 uh, XTX. It's the uh, Red Devil. So let's, uh, let's type in Red Devil. Red Devil. There we go. GPU. Uh, 64 gigs of Corsair Dominator, 4,600 megahertz RAM. Uh, an Asus Crosshair 8 uh, AM4 motherboard. Uh, EVGA 1,000 watt power supply. It's modular. Arctic Freezer 3, 360 millimeter AIO CPU cooler. A Rode Pod mic, as you kind of see here. Okay. Um, of course, the boom arm for the pod mic. It's an Elgato low profile. Um, the Elgato Wave XLR audio interface, and the Elgato Stream Deck Plus, the Aver Media Live Gamer Portable 2 Plus Capture Card. That is for whenever I stream with my Nintendo Switch. That's the only purpose for that. Uh, Elgato Face Cam 1080. It's the 1080p. It's not the Face Cam Pro. That's 4K. I do not need that, nor do you. Um, there's very, there's some, a, a few situations where the 4k could come into play, but, um, Twitch and YouTube, your, your webcams at like 720p, 1080p at best. I believe it's just at 720p. So you don't need a 4k webcam, um, is it a little more versatile. And if you're you know, as overall as a content creator, if you had the 4K one, yeah. If you were doing a lot of YouTube videos, so a lot of recordings, uh, then the 4K webcam uh, could come into play. And uh, hope everyone's having a great day. And I, I hope this uh, stream is informative for people. And, yeah, like I say, feel free. Fire off those questions. If you have been streaming for a while and you're struggling with your stream quality, um, if you're thinking about getting into it and you think, man, I don't know if I could do this. We're going to, we're going to resolve that today. Okay. We're going to answer those questions for you. So feel free to fire off any questions that you have. All right. So I have triple monitors and we'll discuss monitors here, uh, in, in a little bit because I will walk you through this setup and I will tell you why I've made the choices that I have. And I'm also going to cover a super basic setup. All right, we, uh, I had the Sennheiser 590X headphones. I do not use a gaming headset. Do I have one? Yep, right here. There it is. It's a Steel Series gaming headset. It's a great starting point. 
the mic on that particular model is, is pretty good. Um, then I have my green screen behind me. That's how this is happening to where I'm blending into the background. So, and that's how like my hands and everything get chopped off. Yeah. Um, that's really handy if the green screen is great because my background's not great. At, at my old house, I had product boxes, LED lights, fish tanks, you name it. Yeah, I mean, it, it was appealing. So it was visually appealing. So therefore, I didn't really need the green screen, but I did have it for my content creation. And I will show you, I used to do uh, fake advertisements uh, as fillers for when I would go on break. Um, so it was just a way to entertain the audience as, as I was using the restroom or grabbing a coffee or whatever the case might be. Um, I have two LED lights uh, that light my green screen. So have you ever seen the guy that around him, it's kind of glitchy, you know? It looks like, you know, weird light. and That's because your green screen's not lit properly. You do not see any of that around me during my live stream because the bottom corners of the screen are being lit. But we can go into that more later. All right, so I'm using OBS Studio for, for streaming for an exact purpose, really. Uh, because Streamlabs OBS will not do what OBS Studio will do in my use case, streaming to multiple platforms at one time. And then, uh, of course, yeah, on the bottom of the list, but I mentioned it earlier, is the Elgato Low Profile Boom Arm. All right, so let's start with why I've made the choices that I have. Now, I'm obviously streaming to Twitch and YouTube at the same, at the same time. So I currently am using the 5950X CPU, the 16 core, because my Twitch stream is being encoded by my processor. The different types of encoders out there, uh, I can kind of show you, I guess, here. Uh, I'm going to drag this over. Okay, so here we are. Hi, see myself. All right, so if I go under my settings, and we're going to go over this, like best settings or good settings to get you started uh, as well. So I've, I've gone under my output tab. Now this drop down that won't currently go anywhere. Um, it's AMD Hardware AV1. That is my YouTube stream. My graphics card is streaming to YouTube, and YouTube will utilize the AV1 encoder. <clears throat> that is the best encoder that you can use right now in streaming, okay? Uh, at least that we have access to. Um, I'm sure in the enterprise world, uh, there is better that like TV stations and such might use, but those are very expensive. Uh, there's a lot of specialized equipment involved in going beyond an AV1 encoder. Um, like YouTube, for instance, um, it's something like Neo 6 or Neo 9. They, they have something totally more advanced than AV1 that they're using um, to encode the streams and then send them back to people. But for us, the AV1 encoder is a great choice. All right. So um, I'm also using, like I say, my, my processor. So I'm just going to click OK, and we'll, we'll come back to this here in a bit. All right. Um, so, yeah, I'm using my CPU for my Twitch streams, and that is using the software X264 encoder. The purpose for that is I discovered that if you have an AMD GPU and you try to use the H264 encoder on the AMD GPUs, you're going to get pixelation it's going to be garbage. Now, I have fiber internet here. Okay, so internet speed and bandwidth and all that is a non-issue. Um, so a good way, and, and we might as well just go ahead and, uh, and I, I will show you something right meow. All right, so I'm going to bring up old Google. And I'm going to go to speedtest.net. So this is kind of a, a good starting point, really. So you come here to <coughs> you come here to speed test and we hit go. This is going to test your upload and your download speeds. 
And as you can see, mine's pretty high. So we're at 934 currently. Let's see where our average is out at. All right, so it's going to give us our score. Um, so, yeah, 936 up with all the stuff going and my roommate utilizing the Internet right now. So it's it's not a problem. And any at any point, if you have any questions, people, feel, feel free. All right, so um, 936 down, but the most important, upload. 931 up. I could essentially set my bit rate to 900 and 30,000 before I would run out of internet. It's ridiculous. You know, I mean, basically the sky's the limit. You would never put it to that because if you were trying to watch the stream, it would just buffer for days. You, no one would be able to watch it. So that's how it, it works with uh, bandwidth and, 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 and internet speeds with streaming. Um, so generally, if you're, say, getting 20 megabits per second, all right, you want to take half of that, and that is your bit. That's what you can go with for your bit rate. So if I get twenty, you could set it to say ten. You could uh, upload to and Twitch only. Uh, it limits to the technically they say six thousand. Uh, it's more like eight thousand. Okay, before they take away your ability to um, change the resolution that that people can can watch it at. Um, so they're able to scale it for their, for their device. Um, so yeah, you could be at 10,000 at that point for Twitch, but if you're multi-streaming like me, you need even more bandwidth because for YouTube, I'm at 30,000 bit rate. Let me see either 25 or 30,000 currently. And I'm streaming at 1440p. I could stream at 4k. I may try that, uh, in the near future here. Uh, I'm set at 30,000, so for YouTube. Uh, they don't have the limitations. YouTube goes all the way up to 51,000 for your bit rate. Uh, so that's what's supported. Twitch supports, uh, like, say, technically they say 6,000, but you could go up to 8,000. You have to include your your audio in there as well. Um, that's added on two. So if your audio is set at... 160 for uh, for your bit rate on that you have to take your video 7500 plus the 160 and so that's why we go 7500 it allows us some headroom all right so without getting off topic or anything here all right so here here we go here's my list why, why am i doing what i'm doing so the ryzen 950 950x cpu i'm using my cpu from my twitch stream that's encoding that so i needed more cores. Um, because I'm multi-streaming, this is a bigger deal. All right. Then my graphics card, which is the 7900 XTX Red Devil graphics card. Um, I'm using that to in the, with the AV1 encoder to send to YouTube. So that these two top items here are very important. They are taking care of my encoding. Uh, now, the, the RAM. I'm running 64 gigs of RAM. I'm doing that because I am running two streams at one time. Do you need 64? No, you don't. 32 is is absolutely fine. I would not recommend 16. I would uh, you, even the games these days are taking more and more RAM. So I would say if you had 16 for the application you're running, plus six, you know, for the game. And then the other 16 for all your streaming stuff going on, okay? That's probably about perfect for most people. Most people are going to stream to one platform. I'm doing two. Okay, so motherboard, don't get too wrapped up in the motherboards, okay? Um, something mid-range to lower end is fine. You all, the, This motherboard I have, I got it refurbished, so I got a good deal on it. And henceforth, why I have it. Um, it's really, you only, the high-end motherboards are meant for overclocking. I, I'm allowing my system to self-overclock. So that's the only overclocking that's getting done. Uh, power supply. 
Now, for, for just building your own gaming PC, here's what you have to keep in mind. The, um, the way power supplies work is there's an efficiency curve, okay? So if you are drawing 500 watts and you've got this curve going on, okay, right in the middle is, is peak efficiency. So if you are pulling 500, well, you want some headroom. Uh, number one, if your power supply is working really hard all the time, it's going to get hot. You know, it's you could have a fire if you're just absolutely maxing that thing out. Uh, I've had a situation where I had a power supply that uh, I felt the cord and and I thought the shielding on it was going to melt. It was it was that warm because I was drawing that much uh, through that power supply all the time. That's really hard on a uh, on a power supply. So with this bell curve, all right. So if we're 500 watts right in the middle, in a perfect world. Okay, we'll just say if you had a thousand watt supply, you're right in the middle of that curve. You're pulling 500, you've got a thousand to work with, you're not going to hurt anything. The power supply isn't going to pull, your computer's not going to pull more juice just because you have a bigger supply. It's only going to pull what it needs. So you're, you're not going to lose a bunch of efficiency by doing that. So don't be afraid. I mean, obviously, the more power you have the more expensive they are so stay within your budget but if you're pulling 500 watts i'm more comfortable with have a seven 750 watt supply you know be somewhere reasonably in that curve uh, i would not max it out leave yourself at least 100 watts i prefer 200 watts of headroom so yeah a lot of graphics cards and we can even look here so if you go on new egg and all right, so here's this 4080 Super Trinity. Now, if I scroll down, specs. All right, right here. Down, 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 down. Okay, recommended PSU, 750 watts. I would have a 950. Myself, personally, I would choose a 950-watt supply. Yes, 750 would probably get it done, but once again, you're making your, uh, your power supply work awfully hard all the time. So I, I would recommend go 200 watts over that. Get a 950. And then you'll never have to worry about, oh, God, I'm going to have a fire because this thing's getting too hot. You know, yeah, you're going to avoid. It's, it's a safety issue, really. And uh, it's going to be more cleaner, more efficient, stable power, which is going, you know, for your PC, which is going to avoid a lot of problems. Okay. So we've covered, like, power supplies. Now, the cooler. Now, my CPU, I have it self-overclocking, so I have a big water cooler. Can you do all this on air? Yes, absolutely. Um, if you have an AMD CPU, the better the cooler, the better that they um, kind of self-overclock. And they're only going to stay within the thermal limit. So your CPUs, uh, they go up to 90C before they start the thermal throttle. Um, so we want to be below that. Uh, if I look at my CPU right now, it's probably at, oh, it's probably at 50 some Celsius. When I'm gaming, it gets up to about 75 whenever I'm throwing a, a really graphically intense game at it. So it, it gets a bit higher. I still have 15 watts of headroom though. So it never goes above 75 on me. So I, I have some leeway there where it's never going to thermal throttle. Um, so that covers the, uh, why I use the cooler that I do. Um, now I will say the Arctic freezer line, they're absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend them. You can get the new Arctic freezer three, two forty. I think it's like 90 bucks. Okay. Super cheap. And it's one of the best coolers on the market. It doesn't have LCD screens and all the little, little gadgets like that. It's a cooler. Now mine is the RGB version. So I have some pretty lights, but I don't have like, you know, LCD screens, all that, that happy stuff. You'll, you can easily pay $300 for a cooler because it's got a small LCD screen. Do you need it? Nope. How often do you look in your computer and go, oh, look at it, it's so pretty. Every now and then I glance in mine, like, oh, that looks nice. But it's not something that mine's under my desk uh, because I'm running triple monitors. I don't really have room for it to be up on my desk surface 
it's only like a, a 60 inch wide desk so by like 35 so I, I only have so much real estate to work with here all right so audio that's that's a big topic and like I say if anybody has any questions feel free to YouTube or Twitch in chat go ahead and fire it up let you know feel free to ask and I'm getting a phone call one second All right, sorry about that. Got a friend of mine that's uh, dropping by, dropping something off to me. So uh, we will take a short break. Now, now we're on the audio interface, like right there. I was able to, you could see me talking, but I was able to easily mute my stream. Um, so audio, here we go. Now I use the Wavelink XLR audio interface. Um, and an Elgato Stream Deck Plus. That is my audio. Now, why do I do that? Because I have access to, let's, let's even put this in here. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make another space. El Gato Wave Link Software. Okay, here we go. So the Wave Link Software, what is it? How does it work? Okay, so here we go. This is a Wave Link Software. So here's my microphone doing the business right now. I can with my Stream Deck Plus and this software, and I, I prefer XLR microphones, even though there's nothing wrong with USB uh, whatsoever. So if you have a USB mic, feel free to use it. But, um, so here we go. Uh, I can see my audio right there from my mic. Now I can mute and unmute, like this right side is stream, the left side is what's in my ears. So I can individually control volumes of my microphone, my desktop audio, my Spotify music. So if I play that, now I can unmute it. There we go. We got music going. Now I can mute it. You know, I can, uh, with the Stream Deck Plus, with Spotify, I can even turn my music on and off and all that good stuff. So with audio, it's, all, it's focused around this program. Henceforth of, you know, why I'm using what I'm using for that. Uh, so it's absolutely fantastic. But, yeah, I have my uh, Discord, my Skype, all those kind of programs. They're right here. Um, and my music's here. Uh, if I have, say, I'm playing a YouTube video for all of you, which I could. Um, browser would be that, Game Sound. Uh, I have an auxiliary set up, and that is... I could set up my, in fact, when I just do that, I will set up my, there we go. There's my capture card. Now that's assigned to that. So if I started doing anything with my capture card, oops, then, uh, then it's going, I can, I'll be able to change my levels for my capture card here. Uh, so out to the stream, we're, well, it'd probably a hundred percent. Well, maybe. We'll see. Well, let's put those at 50. So this is my audio interface that I use. Um, it's very easy, and we can, if people want, I can go into more advanced about the Wavelink software, but that's currently what I use. Okay, so we've covered, uh, you know, uh, like I say, audio, you can be, uh, What you know, what I'll, I'll save it. I'll save it. Um, for like the basic setup, because we're going to go over that next. Um, so webcam, like say 1080p webcam, you don't need a 4K webcam, okay? Mm, this image you're looking at right now is like 720p is what it gets broadcasted at. Even though I have it set to 1080, ultimately it comes out like 720p. It's probably pretty clear, you know? Uh, the last time I looked at one of my streams, I could easily see that, hey, I've got blue eyes, so it must be pretty clear. Um, so, the lights. Now, this is huge. So, a lot of people don't understand lighting. Lighting is hugely important. It's major. 
you could take a $5,000 camera, okay, have poor lighting, and it'll look like crap. Or you could take a $50 webcam, put it under good lighting, and it'll look quite good. So lighting is really key. You don't have to use the Elgato key lights, okay? They're expensive. They're 200 bucks a piece. I am using the newer SL1 Pro um, key lights. They were like 130 bucks a piece and not 200. They have um, they they work with my Stream Deck. I can I can go here to my Stream Deck and I can turn a light off. I can turn a light on with it. I can adjust the brightness. So if I want to turn it off with that, or now we can go super bright. So I go up by one percent at a time. You can set that up. So just the tap of a button here, I'm changing the intensity of my lighting. So it's a great way to save a few bucks. What you're going to find is any way that you can save some money, by all means, you know, you, it doesn't have to be name brand everything. You know, some of, the, some of the brands that you are less familiar with are quite good. Okay. So, um, yeah, that covers my lighting. Now, for my green screen, I have two small little, it's like $30 for the pair. They're little Amazon LED lights with little tripods on them. They light the corners of my screen. So you don't get that funny outline around me, that, that flicker. Uh, so that's huge. So that's pretty much my lighting. I have my two key lights up front, and I have the two lights in the back. I use a green screen because there's nothing I could do to make this room look amazing, uh, unlike my old house where... Uh, I mean, I had, I had all the things going on. You know, it was it was a pretty cool setup. Uh, okay, so yeah, my Nintendo Switch that's hooked up to my capture card. I do stream Twitch games every now and then, so why not? Um, so triple monitors. Do you need triple monitors? No. Are they nice? Yeah. Do you need two? Yes. I would definitely recommend. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Okay, you could have your really nice high-end gaming monitor and some old 1080p monitor laying around. Use it, you know, hook it up. The reason for that is all the extra stuff that you have going on. So if I go here to my display capture settings in OBS and I change it over to, let's go this one. All right, so this is what one monitor is currently showing. And it's kind of cool how you can easily switch that. I could set up uh, my stream deck to, to do this with like one button press if I want. Um, I probably will because this is kind of useful. So if you look here, I've got my Spotify going on right here. Okay. My Wavelink software and my Discord. And then I leave a room for like a web page or something like that. So that's really nice to have that on its own monitor. I never have to change anything. It's always there. It's handy to have that available. Now, if I go to another, my other monitor on my left, so this one's on my right. All right, now we're gonna bounce over to this monitor. Hey, what do you know? It's my OBS studio, okay? So that's where, and obviously the sizing is a, is a little off. Uh, but as soon as I change it to my primary, because it's only 1920 by 1080, but that's where my OBS is. So I have constantly see what's going on there. Can shut things off, turn things on. Uh, I have my chats going. This is my Twitch chat. That's my YouTube chat right up there. Um, this is what's like excellent stream quality, gets the title, all that kind of stuff. But we can, uh, we'll walk through OBS Studio here in a bit. So let's go back to the main display. Primary monitor. So here we go. Um, so that's kind of like my setup, okay? Um, do you absolutely need this? No. Is it nice to have as you grow and everything? Sure. It, it's great to have such things. And and as always, if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free. Uh, chats are, are there for you. Uh, I will do my best to answer those questions. I've, I've been at this a while. So uh, I've a, a, accumulated a bit of knowledge. All right, so basic a basic setup. What do you need to live stream? Okay, well, and 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 it tell you what, we'll even throw. This is not a must, but it's not bad. 
a game console. All right. All right. So we got a game console. That could be a Switch, a PlayStation, Xbox, doesn't matter. So I would recommend at least an eight, eight core CPU. I would recommend 32 gigs of RAM. I would recommend the RTX 4060 for your graphics card. Why do I say that? I'll, I'll go into further detail here in a moment on why I would choose that graphics card for your entry-level streaming rig. Um, so a webcam of, of some kind, the uh, Logitech C920 or the 922, but the 920 has been around for ages. The quality is pretty good. It's a good webcam. Uh, gaming headset, you know, something like this, uh, this steel series here, which, uh, I rarely ever use, but it's wireless, which is, is a nice pet to have. But I mean, the mic on it, it will work. You don't have to have a road pod mic. As long as you can get your voice out there, you're good to go. OBS. And like I say, if you have a game console, um, that's less stress on your, uh, computer. If you are a console streamer, your console is rendering the game, and now your computer, the only thing it's worried about doing is encoding your stream. Okay, so why would I use the 4060? Okay, well, let's, it's, it's all about, number one, graphics power. Okay, so that, that card will do 1440p. All right. And 1080p. All right, so 1080p games. It will do either one of those just fine. All right, that's that's why we're going to use that. All right. Second reason, it has the AV1 encoder. Just like the uh, AMD cards. All right, they have AV1. So we got the AV1 encoder. That's why we're going to use that. So that works with YouTube. It's completely useless right now for Twitch. That's, they're working on changing that, but I wouldn't count on that coming anytime soon. Okay. Oh, an end coder. It's, it's in. Jeez, I can't, I can't spell. All right. So we got the AV1 encoder. Okay. We also, so this is, uh, we're just going to go dash YouTube. Okay. If I could type, which I can't. So, geez, see, back, back, back. All right. So we got AV1 for YouTube. We've got the, um, one second. Here I have a, a, my friends dropping by. I'll see if he's here real quick. So just one moment, and I'll, I'll show off here with my Be Right Back screen. And I think he's here. So just one moment, and I'll play some music.
All right, here we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, a friend dropping something off to me. I'll go ahead and mute my music here. Okay, so um, we were talking about uh, why the, the, say, the RTX 4060 is, is probably a perfect fit for the beginning streamer. So, number one, it's going to play your games well, okay? Number two, you got your AV1 encoder for YouTube. You have the NVENC new. So, they have an old one and a new one, NVENC new encoder. And that's going to give you good quality for Twitch. Okay? So, that's for your Twitch streams. You don't need like 16 core CPU with the setup because we're going to use our we're going to use a graphics card for our encoding. So, would I recommend that card? You try to do both off of the one card? No, I I wouldn't. Uh, I would it, I would probably go ahead and have a 16 core, 12 or 16 core CPU. I mean, eight is like. If it's a game console situation, the eight core is going to be fine, okay? Because your processor isn't you know, all it's doing is encoding the stream in the first place. So, with a console, yeah, the eight core is fine. But if you're going to try to multi-stream like I'm doing, and there are a few options there, um, I would go with the sixteen, okay, or sixteen core. Or multi-stream. All right, so, so that's I mean that's my would be my recommendations. You don't necessarily have to get the AM5 platform. I didn't. I saved a buck. I went with AM4. All right, and as always, everyone, uh, if you're new to the channel, I'm Grudge, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Okay, I will do my best to answer those. All right, so we've covered our encoders. Um, that those are the two there's pretty much the reasons why you would use that graphics card and price point wise if i go here to new egg let's see what they're going for okay you i mean you don't need a 4080 super it's a nice pet to have but you don't need it um i went with the 7900 xtx over the uh over that 4080 super but i was considering it they're both about the same price point but to be fair in most games uh the xtx without ray tracing and all that actually is does a better job in pure rasterization so here we go rtx 4060 we're gonna go lowest price okay so the cheapest option is 289 without little guy would it work? Yeah. I mean, would I feel better about something, you know, a little beefier, you know, at least like two fans like that? So, you know, there's options for a, so it looks like around 300 bucks you would be into, um, you know, enough graphics card to get the job done, you know, for this basic rig. Um, so yeah, we've got our eight or 16 core CPU. If you been single or multi-streaming, you have 32 gigs of RAM, a 4060, some kind of webcam. The C920 is a good option. The Elgato face cam is a good option, but it's more expensive. Uh, a gaming headset with a microphone. You got your OBS studio to go ahead and stream and record with. Um, your, you know, your software. And then, like I said, you could have a game console. That would also work. So there's your basic streaming setup. You don't have to have a Rode Pod mic or something like that, if you wanted to go ahead and get a USB mic, um, I would highly recommend as starting point, you want the Samson Q2U mic. All right. It is both uh, USB and, no, oh, and I'll, I'll, I'll get fancy, and XLR. It will do both. And the quality is actually really good. Um, I just slightly prefer the sound of this pod mic. Um, with my voice, it just comes out a little clearer, cleaner. I like the pod mic just, I mean, it's barely, uh, barely any better in to my ears than uh, 
than a Samsung Q2U. I have one over in the drawer over here. So I, I currently own, um, you know, that type of mic. So speaking of microphones, I do want to quickly talk since I'm on that topic. We're just kind of all over the place. So, you know, if anybody has any questions you want to reel me in, feel free. Might as well sip some coffee. There are two different types of microphone, okay? You've got dynamic, and you have condenser. Condenser. Okay, so we've got dynamic, we've got condenser. Well, which one's right for you? If you are in a noisy environment, you have a mechanical keyboard, it's nice and clicky, things like that. That Samsung Q2U is a dynamic microphone. That is your best best bet. Okay, it's going to block out outside noise better than uh, anything. Okay, the condenser mic. It's going to if a mouse farts in the other room, you're going to hear it. Now, if you're someone that for your live streams you like to get up and move around, maybe you play a guitar, you know, you, something along those lines. Maybe you're you know, up doing silly stuff, dancing, whatever the case might be, and you still want to be able to communicate clearly with your audience, that's where a condenser mic comes into play. You're going to pick up the whole room of sound. You could do both. You could have one of each and then switch off. It's as simple as muting one versus the other. So that is a possibility, and there are audio interfaces out there that would allow you to do that um, at the push of a button. So you could go that route, but that's kind of the quick little difference on microphones. The Rode Pod mic's a hundred bucks. The Samsung Q2U is 60, 70 bucks, roughly. And it's a very versatile microphone. And like I say, I have one in the drawer over there. I use that until I got my pod mic. Uh, I use, there's nothing wrong with using USB. Okay. So we've kind of covered the basic rig. And kind of covered why I use what I use. Like, here's all my stuff I use. Pretty close to everything. Um, so, yeah, I'm really pleased with the quality that I get. So, any questions? Anybody? Anybody? Watching, watching chat here. Feel free to chime in. Anything? Um, the nice thing is streaming doesn't have to cost a ton of money, you know. Uh, so if I guess if I go back here to to this, all right, um, CPU. You can get you can get a core CPU for like mm, any more. I'm gonna say 150 bucks. Okay, 150, 180 bucks. You're into an a core CPU. In fact, well, let's find out. Um, even the um, the 5700X. So if we go Ryzen. 5700X. It's a it's an eight core. It it did do a fine job. All right. Okay. Eh, two ninety eight. That's not the cheapest I've seen it. Hmm. Let's check Amazon because that that seems high. does seem a bit high. All right. Let's see what it goes for on Amazon. Okay. There we go. $163. 160. Uh, you know, the G, you don't want that. But, uh, yeah, 163 bucks. So, if we pick that processor and motherboard, okay. Um, how about motherboards-wise, let's look at... Um, Oh, Azrock X. Uh, or let's go. We're, we're saving money, so let's go. Let's go B. Oh, let's go B five fifty motherboard. Okay, so there we go. Now, wait, I mean that eighty nine dollar motherboard would serve the purpose, you know. So if we want to keep it super basic, yeah, something like this. About it. I mean, it'll work. It's, it's. I mean, definitely not like the best VRMs and stuff on it. But myself, I would 
lean towards something like right here. There we go. You know, something like this. The uh, the cooling on the, the VRM cooling and all that's better. You know, it has more heat sinks, better heat sinks. Something like that. 123 bucks plus what? What do we have? 160 You know, you're at right around 300 bucks. You got CPU. You got processor. You're sorted. So that's kind of where I would be. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that 4060 that's 300 bucks. So now we're at, we've got CPU, we've got processor. You can get 32 gigs of RAM for like 80 bucks, 100 bucks tops. So we'll just say your, between your CPU and your motherboard and your graphics card, we're now at 600. We'll say 700 bucks with the RAM. I mean, if you've got an anal webcam just laying around, if you already have a gaming headset, you know, that you like, you're pretty much there, you know. You could live stream. Now, I understand that game consoles themselves have the ability to, you can live stream off of them, but here's what you're missing out on. This is really the big thing. Now, there are some aftermarket things that, you know, yeah, they kind of have overlays and paid services for that. But what you're missing out on, like that, a transition, that starting screen. The ability to have the overlays, the live screen, to be able to do what I'm doing with the green screen. You're not going to do that directly off a console. You know, my break screen, my end screen. So that's the kind of stuff that you're missing out on by just trying to do it off a of console itself. All right. Um, now, any questions? Uh, questions, concern, queries, thoughts? Tell me, are you, know, you having a good day? Okay. So, um, I will cover. Um, I'm not trying to, I know my daughter, she wants to have some time with me today. So, you know, I, I can't take all day with this live stream, but, um, we're going to cover, oh, let's see. How about, let's just, I'm just going to cover all the programs I use. I'm just going to drag this over Spotify. Okay. Make sure if you play music, there you go. Music. You notice copyright free music for Twitch. Use copyright free. If you don't, they'll mute your uh, they'll mute sections of your stream. It's not the whole thing, and you could technically get a strike. In fact, let me turn the volume to the stream down. There we go. Now it's a little quieter. But um, yeah, I mean, I like having music for when I take a break. Whenever I'm whenever I'm starting up the stream, ending the stream, I like to start finish everything with music. Have have a filler. I use Spotify, but just make sure it's copyright free music. Uh, Stream Beats by um, Harris Heller, I think his name is. Um, he, you know, it's really good. I think I actually have Stream Beats as well. So you can check Stream Beats. So that covers my music. Obviously, uh, Discord for your, if I can get this to move, Discord. That's what I use for voice chat with my friends. I, I rarely ever, I don't ever use the in-game chat built in games. Uh, once in a blue moon, maybe. Um, if I'm trying to play with viewers, it's handy to to like use in-game voice communications. But for the most part, have your Spotify for your music, copyright free stuff, okay? And then your Discord for your voice chat. And then I've got my Wavelink audio program. So here we go. We'll just do it real time. Here you go. Your music's about to get loud. There you go. 70%. Nice. Real loud. Now it's about to get quiet. So that's the handiness. This is the stream site. It's, uh, I highly recommend this software. If you just get the Stream Deck Plus, or if you just get the Wave XLR, or you get a Wave Mic, any of those products will give you access. It just takes one. Uh, you'll have access to this program. And it's pretty easy to set up. Uh, there's loads of tutorials on YouTube uh, by Elgato of how to set this up. So we've covered your Discord, your uh, Spotify, 
and your wavelength. Now, as far as setup goes, if you go into your sound settings and then say, for instance, actually, it's not sound settings. It'd be um, volume mixer. Okay. So if I go down here, here's my Spotify. If you go to this drop down, you can choose the source. So if you have like the Wavelink software, I have it assigned to my music channel. So Wavelink Music, uh, I can assign that to whichever channel I want. But I've got you know, a channel specifically set up for music. So that's where that's at. And so you do want to go into each one of your audio sources. So Google Chrome, that is assigned to browser. And that all coincides with the Wavelink software. Um, it's, it's really stupid easy to set up. So it's basically get it set up to where your OBS. Um, in fact, I'll just go ahead and show you. All right, so we're going we're gonna to drag OBS Studio over here. All right, so you've got your Wavelink software because you have an Elgato product. Now you're going to go into your audio settings. So we see Wavelink Stream right here. Now I'm going to go into the properties because I already have it set up. On this drop down, you see Wavelink Stream. What the Wavelink is doing, that software, it's taking audio, audio, all of your audio sources and it's dumping it into one location that OBS, Streamlabs OBS, XSplit, whatever streaming software you're using can pick up on. Okay, so instead of having all these things, you have one, one spot. So if you simply go to your Wavelink stream, hit OK. Now all my sources are coming in. My mic's going to show up here. So if I mute this music, okay, now the bar is not moving unless I talk because that's my microphone. Uh, if I played a YouTube video, you know, once again, the bar would move for that. So that just gets everything into one source. You set it up in Wavelink. It automatically outputs to, to your Wavelink stream. You just simply choose that source. Off you go. Now, settings. Here we go. I'll do in Twitch, YouTube, and multi. Okay. So the way it works is, first off, in your stream tab. Uh, now, because I'm multi-streaming and I'm using my AV1 encoder for uh, for YouTube, I have it set up to where I, I'm logged into my YouTube account. So... Uh, YouTube RT, P, uh, RTMPS and primary and just server. And I'm logged in, as you can see, maximum video bit rate 51,000, maximum audio is 160. Uh, I have clicked ignore streaming service setting uh, recommendations. So I would recommend you do that. But yeah, I'm logged into my YouTube. Now, if I was going to go, if I was going to stream just on Twitch, just go and log into your Twitch. That's all you got to do. Uh, you know, pretty pretty simple stuff. Okay, and let's see here. I'm going to click OK. I've got my Twitch chat over here. I want to have that easily legible in case somebody has any questions. Okay, so stream. I'm logged into YouTube. You could also log into your Twitch account. Um, output. Uh, because I'm on YouTube, I've got AV1 encoding. Uh, CBR, you want your rate control to CBR. Uh, bit rate for YouTube, as high as you can get away with. So do your speed test. See what kind of internet speeds you've got, okay? Um, so that's that's really what you want to do is go, I mean, within reason. You don't want to put it on 100,000. You have to remember that the higher the bit rate, the harder it is for people to watch. It might sit there and buffer all day. Like, I could put mine on 50,000. I have. But then it just buffered too much. We don't want that. We want somebody clicks on your video. You don't want to buffer for three days or intermittently. That's not a good experience for the for your viewers. Keyframe interval for both Twitch and YouTube is two. Um, I'm set on the quality preset for whatever high quality. It just uh, it, it's just too much. Even for my system, I I found some glitchy moments, some drop frames. So I just leave it on quality, and it looks pretty good, you know. Um, <clears throat> audio, uh, I've just got on 48 kilohertz. I haven't done anything special there. I think YouTube prefers 44 kilohertz, but I haven't, I haven't had any issues just leaving it pretty much standard. Here's that Wavelink stream, 
So you can also change your your setting here too. Video, uh, I'm streaming at 1440p to YouTube, so I've just got it at the matching the base canvas resolutions or whatever your your gaming monitor is, whether it's not, uh, 1080 or 1440, it's going to match that. I've got it set at 60 FPS. Hotkeys doesn't matter unless you're going to set up hotkeys because you don't have, say, a Stream Deck. Uh, you can utilize your uh, make make up your own hotkeys, like have everything bound to a number pad or something uh, to change scenes and all that good stuff. So that is available to you. Accessibility don't really need to ever mess with that, and then. Um, there's really nothing you're going to do in the advanced tab at this point in time. Um, so that's just kind of the basics. Now, multi-streaming. What I'm currently doing is I am streaming to Twitch and YouTube same time. There is a plugin uh, that you can get. So it's uh, the author for it is Sora Yuki. Okay. Now, if I click modify here, my stream key, all that good stuff. Thankfully, it doesn't show. Don't ever show your stream key to people, by the way. If you accidentally show it, you need to reset your stream key and get it, get a different one. Because then anybody can log on to your account. Okay. So, no one can see my stream key, which I will not show it. But with, the, uh, with this plugin, what you can do is now... YouTube is where I'm set up with my AV1 encoder. My processor is doing Twitch. So with this plugin, hey, how you doing there, Dolphin? Hope you're having a good day. Um, yeah. So what's good? Um, now OBS Studio. If you're if you're talking about streaming software, then yeah, OBS Studio for multi-streaming is definitely the way to go. Uh, if you have any questions on, like, uh, what PC setup and all that you need, I can definitely answer those. So feel free to uh, ask any questions that, that you might have. Um, so just like YouTube, I have it set up CBR. Bit rate is 7,500. I left myself a little bit of headroom. Technically, um, oh, thank you. So technically... Twitch says 6,000 is the cap for your bit rate. That's not true. It's more like it's more like 8,250, you know. But we just put on 7,500. Now, because I have uh, my keyframes set it too, but here's the big thing is, my, because I have a 16-core CPU, I have my settings set to slow, okay? I'm going to get really good quality on Twitch with that. However... If, say, you have a lesser processor, that's fine. You can go very fast. I wouldn't go any, I wouldn't put on super fast or ultra fast. The quality is just, it's terrible. But very fast is de is pretty good, okay? Uh, I would not be ashamed to have it on very fast. So I would probably just set it on very fast. There's so minimal difference uh, between very fast and faster. Um, I would just put on very fast and and set it and forget it. Now slow definitely looks better. Okay, it, but not it's not night and day, but it definitely looks better. Uh, I'm very picky. You have your brain set to slow. <laughs> Mine too. Um, I try to set it on fast, and it just doesn't work out. You know very well. So yeah, just uh, if you've got a, a big daddy CPU like like myself and you know Mr. Deranged, he has. He has all the best gear. I can tell you that. He he's a boss. He's a boss. He's got all the best stuff. Um. So yeah, I've got mine set to slow, but nothing wrong with very fast. Uh, nothing special on the profile. Max B frames. Just set it to two. So that takes care of the multi streaming. Oh, thank you so much, D. I uh, I did my hair just for you, buddy. Just for you. And I made this coffee just for me. It tastes okay, even though it's a little bit on the cold side now. But uh, yeah, Mister Drange, we are we're going through all all things streaming. Um, I was going to record a YouTube video, but since 
you know, my broadcasts basically go into Avad and, and are available for people to watch again. Uh, <laughs> nice. Well, Mr. Deranged there. So if you're in uh, the old YouTube chat, you'll see Mr. Deranged. He's a, uh, he's an experienced streamer. He's experienced a lot. And he's, he's also saving lives as a fireman. You know, I won't say what department and embarrass him, you know, or anything like that, you know, but, uh, yeah, he, he's fireman. He's, he saves lives. You know, he gives mouth to mouth to people and sometimes animals to save them too. You know, I think it's the whiskers myself that, that probably are, you know, floating his boat. But, you know, just, that's, I'm just saying, just saying, you know. Uh, but, yeah, <clears throat> back to the uh, the topic here. So OBS, in, it's it can be very simple. If uh, you are just setting up for Twitch, you know, the, the short version, go to your stream, choose Twitch, log into your account, go to your output, set it to, uh, say, if you had that RTX 4060, set it to NVENC new. And then CBR, have your bit rate at like 7,500. And then there will be additional quality settings. So you could set it on like high quality, something like that with that graphics card with the NVENC encoder. And set your keyframes to two, your max B frames to two, and hit the go live button. You're pretty much good. Hey, how you doing? Hope everyone's having a great day. And, th and thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, I talk streaming stuff so often that I haven't really sat down and just explained everything and talked about, about why I have the setup that I do, what it does for me, a basic setup to get going, you know? I mean, not everybody um, can, can get a, a $2,000 computer, you know, to stream with. Well, you don't need that. I mean, you could, you could have a $1,000 computer and, and it'll do a fine job. You could have an $800 computer. You could have a $500 computer and a game console, and you could still have high-quality streams, okay? So the the price for entry is considerably lower. So, yeah, if anybody has any questions, some burning question in your mind that you've always wanted to ask other than, you know, like uh, why I shave my head. No. <laughs> um. I shave my head, honestly, because, well, A, I hate to comb hair, and two, uh, my daughter thinks when I'm wearing my glasses, I look like the guy in Breaking Bad when I wear my glasses, so that's, that's kind of why I do it. But yeah, your you're just basic streaming setup. Eight, eight core CPU will get it done, 32 gigs of RAM, an RTX 4060, a webcam, gaming headset with a mic, I mean... We're talking basic. It'll get you live. You'll sound okay. You'll look okay. Um, lighting, there, there's a lot of fun things you can do with lighting. You can, uh, well, let me see here. I, I, I don't know if I'm going to, let's see if I can find it here. If I can get on my, like my Google photos and I'm just going to, I'm not going to broadcast that one to, to everybody because uh, I don't know what you're going to see. You know, I might. <laughs> I might have pictures of Mr. Deranged Ass or something, you know, like, like what the hell happened there? You know, I, you just never know what crazy stuff. I mean, alcohol do, you do funny things. So, <laughs> yeah, we're going to go here to uh, photos. I'm going to go to my, uh, my photos on good old Google. And I think I have like some old... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, here's an old picture. Okay. So let's drag this over. And it's not Mr. Drange's ass. <laughs> so, yeah, this is my old setup. There's the DSLR camera. Uh, there's the Go X. And Mr. Deranged wouldn't know anything about any of this equipment at all. At all. I'll show the background here in a moment. The uh, trash can. I kept it pretty tidy. Okay. Cable management wasn't perfect, wasn't terrible though. But uh, yeah, here's the, you know, like I said, the DSLR camera, the Rode Pod mic. Um, I kept that for another view. It eventually became the Bill and George cam because I had a couple of Koi Carp. But there was down here, there's the, 
That was the streaming PC, and up here was the gaming PC. So, yeah, I mean, that, that was kind of the old setup and everything. Uh, let me see here. I'm going to see if I can find, like, my, a background picture. I seem to have a very limited amount of pictures, honestly, on this particular Google account. I'm actually kind of surprised I, I had that one. Uh, let's see. It looks like I would need to log into another account. Well, let's see here. Verify it's me. Yes, it is, it is definitely me. Let's get logged in here. Continue, please. Yes, yes, yes. It's It's me. Please. I'm just trying to get to my photos. That's all I'm trying to do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, here's... This This is a classic picture here I'm going to show off. We're, we're getting a little bit off topic here. There we go. Captain Slappy. Hell, yeah. One of my fake adverts. <laughs> Some other guy that I know currently, I think he's still got the eye patch and the, and the hat and stuff. You know, I think he does. <laughs> that was one of my uh, my fictitious characters. Ah, here we go. Now this. There you go. That's the old setup right there. Oh, and minus the, you know, the Budweiser. It's It's gone a long time ago. But, yeah, I had the, uh, the webcam set up for Bill and George there, all kinds of stuff. That was... My background's a little more appealing back then. We got the we got the uh, canister filter for the fish tank. If I had room, I probably would have a fish tank here again. But unfortunately, I do not. <laughs> they had too much fun and stuff with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know you did too. You probably all ran around the house playing pirates and stuff. Um, yeah, my background, um, so that was actually fairly appealing to look at, was this. So behind, before I had the fish tank set up, I had product boxes and all that good stuff set up. So that's some LED lights, you know, kind of made everything look nice. So, yeah, it wasn't too bad. So, yeah, um, if you don't have a pretty background, the green screen is definitely a, a great way to go. Um, now, green screen, uh, here, here's something that you can do, is I went out and bought... Oh, I was I got way off basis here. Okay, lighting. Uh, I was talking about lighting. Things that you can do. You can go to Walmart and get some inexpensive lights, because that's what this up here is. It's you're just like little um, under-the-counter lights. And then you get some, uh, get a uh, frosted shower curtain. And then you can create a little canopy or, you know, a little enclosure for your lights. And that will soften them. But that's what, I used to have this big green screen set up. And I went to a fabric store and, uh, and just got, you know, some of the green fabric. I took a PVC pipe and I attached, uh, with some screws, I, I attached the uh, fabric to the PVC pipe, and then I had some hooks on the ceiling that I could roll this thing up and just bloop and pop it up there and then just unroll it and, and hang it down whenever I needed it. And I had it where it just went to the floor, and I actually put a little bit of sand in the, uh, the PVC pipe. That way it added some weight to it and helped keep it semi-taunt. So that's kind of what I used to do. Um, the The new setup is... It's a little bit simpler. I don't really have uh if I had a picture uploaded like of the room, I don't think I do. No, not really. But yeah, that's that's kind of the old the old setup. Um if you get into things like um a DSLR camera and all that good stuff, then you end up getting into A, the cameras aren't cheap. And B, the, um, you have to have like a Elgato cam link or something like that in order to send the signal 
from the camera to the computer. And you also need a, um, they have a, like a battery pack that uh, allows you to plug the, the camera into the wall and have constant power to it. Uh, also, if your camera has to have a clean HDMI out. So that's that's another thing. But uh, if anybody has any, any questions, um, yeah, feel free to ask. I mean, whatever silly questions. Oh, I, uh, I worked for Dell at one point. And I, uh, this is kind of a fun one. So I was working for Dell, and they sent me to Columbus, Ohio, okay? And I had to live in a hotel. And you can stream off of a wireless signal, okay? It is possible. If, if, the, if the signal's good enough, it can be done. And um, in my hotel room, this was my setup in my hotel room. <laughs> yep and this is before i had the pod mic and stuff but my original blue yeti and i i wouldn't know where that is right now either but yeah this is this is what i told the cleaning ladies to stay away from <laughs> two ultra wide monitors would know where they are right now you know this pc you know i had a corsair uh liquid cooler in this thing you know, all that, all that kind of stuff. But yes, this was my. I used their uh, their their little lamp in the in the hotel room for uh, for some lighting. You know. But yeah, that's pretty basic right there. Eventually, I did incorporate. I think I'm trying to think if I had a second. I think I had a second PC in there. I think I did use both. It is at well, at some point. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> that's my mobile setup right there. No, it, it doesn't make much sense. Um, so we're a DSLR camera. Oh, oh. yeah, the, the, the 4060, the, you know, it does only have eight gigs of VRAM, but we're talking a basic setup. Um, now, as far as. Oh, the DSLR? Um, yeah, I mean, DSLRs, here's the situation I would have a DSLR. All right, number one, a webcam just doesn't provide you the angles, you know, like the field of view that you're after. Maybe you have a really beautiful streaming room and you want to show off a lot of it and you need a wide-angle lens, you know, something. Or maybe you wanted to get really creative and have like a fisheye lens and have a, a really cool effect. Um to, to your, your camera, then, yeah, I could see it then. Or you are a content creator. Yep. Okay. A GT7. Okay. Okay. Well, to be fair, um, since you're into, like, the 31, uh, your motherboard, say it's a B, even a B450, um, or uh, or an X four uh, four seventy or B five fifty B X five uh, X five seventy. So your motherboard, you could easily um, put a a bigger CPU in there if you need it. However, I don't think you need to do that. The GT seven ten, it's all right. Okay. However, I would recommend going with the forty sixty if you really want to get into streaming and be serious about it. The 4060 is going to be, yeah, it's 300 bucks, but it's going to game better than what you currently have. It's going to, um, y your streaming options are going to be much, much better. I think I was playing some Destiny or something right there. Let's see, what is that? Yeah, that, that looks like Destiny right there. Looks like my Hunter. But, um, okay, yeah, that B450 you can simply uh, you can drop a five thousand series. So if you want to put it like a a fifty eight hundred X or even a fifty eight uh, the fifty eight hundred X three D in it, that you could do that. You know, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Um, so, but your CPU, uh, it with that graphics card, uh, would say if you have an RTX forty sixty, your CPU is hardly working. 
your graphics card is doing all the heavy lifting. It's encoding the stream. It has a separate chip, and that's one thing you, people have to realize is the newer graphics cards, especially like the 4060, it has its own encoding chip built into the thing. It's it's being it's not even being utilized uh, for most people. It's just it's dormant. As soon as you start encoding a stream, now it starts doing its job. And the amount of um, stress it puts on your PC is so minimal. You're talking 1% to 3% performance drop. It's like, oh, man, I'm losing one FPS because I started streaming. That's how minimal the, uh, the impact is on your system. So for you, your, your CPU is absolutely fine. You don't need to rush out and get another one. The 16 gigs of, of RAM is going to be fine. I would simply, uh, depending on the size of your power supply, we can look to see here what the um, what the forty sixty what it, their power requirements are. So yeah, if you really wanted to, if you wanted to s step up your game on your stream and and have a more versatile setup, you don't need the forty sixty Ti. That one actually priced the performance as one of the worst GPUs you can you can get. Um, the sad part is you could pay a bit less for an AMD GPU. Okay. Just started streaming a week ago. And you normally... I normally don't see my... Okay. 30 to 35% and the GPUs... Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the thing is with the new encoders and everything, the impact on your system is so minimal compared to like, Hey, when me and Mr. Drange got started, I had two PCs for a reason, you know, cause I've always been a quality nut. It's gotta look good. Um, so yeah, if we look at this 4060 right here, if you go down to the specs and I, there's nothing wrong with that brand or anything like that. So if we find our specs for it, they're here somewhere, probably a little further down. Let's see here. Nope, not for this one. Okay, well, we'll choose a different one. Oh, actually, that brand sucks. All right, don't ever buy a PNY graphics card. I repeat, don't ever buy a PNY graphics card. Okay, I uh, when I was a tech for Dell, I was a graphics card expert. Okay, I have tested hundreds of PNY graphics cards. How many do you think ever passed testing? One out of a thousand. One. And two of them caught fire and burnt up the test station. <laughs> yeah. Normal daily usage. Uh, yeah. 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 It sounds like uh, you're doing absolutely Absolutely fine. Um, I I really enjoy my setup now. Now, if I wasn't multi-streaming, it wouldn't be as big a deal because we're live currently on Twitch and YouTube at this moment. So if I wasn't multi-streaming, you know, it, it I wouldn't need as much horsepower under my computer's hood as as I have. Okay, let's look at this this gigabyte because we we're trying to see what the the power requirements are. So for the new budding streamer, man, where usually there's a specs tab. What are they trying to do to me? They're trying to make me look bad here. Oh my god. Just give me the power requirements. It must be oh, no wonder. I'm an idiot. <laughs> We're on Amazon. They don't give you shit. Okay, here we go. RTX. Wow. I'm i I'm a genius. Uh, I will show you here in just a second exactly how I do that. Now, you can use, there is a paid, it's free, but really it's paid. Um, there's Restream IO that you can, you can actually use for multi-streaming, which is going to have their equipment doing the, the multi-streaming for you. And so you're sending out one signal, they're making more out of it. That's fine. Okay, 550 watts. So I would recommend at least, uh, I would say a 650-watt supply. I would probably go 750. 
because the price difference between the 650 and 750 is probably five bucks. So I would get something that's a, a modular 750 watt supply. This card, your CPU, you'd be absolutely fine. So multi streaming. Okay, so how I do it, I go to my settings here. Now, if I go to my output tab or my stream tab, I'm logged into my YouTube account right here because we're go we're on YouTube and we're on Twitch. So I'm logged into YouTube here. And then my encoder, I'm set up for my AV1 encoder because YouTube accepts that. Intel saved me 500 with a, a 10 series. Well, I, I can tell you the only, the only issue is the 10 series, their encoder isn't, uh, it isn't quite as, as good as what they currently have. It will get the job done. Uh, the original NVENC encoder is going to be okay. All right. So you're going to be fine. It's a good place to get started. I would aspire to, um, I would probably aspire to first upgrade your your graphics card to something newer, like a 4060. You know, if you wanted a path forward, I would probably get that. Uh, and then down the road, if you wanted, uh, if you found your performance was lacking in any way, or you were bottlenecking your your graphics card. Bottlenecking is where your CPU is just like pegged all the time. And you, it was like, my CPU is at 99% all the time and my graphics card's at 30%. The CPU is causing a bottleneck, okay? And it can go the other way too. You could have not enough, you could have, uh, you know, um, too little a graphics card and now your CPU, once again, is going to be working too hard. So typically you're going to want... Low CPU usage, like say, I don't know, 10, 20, 30%, 50% at the most. And then your graphics card, you're going to see it's always pegged at 90 some percent. You know, um, that's that's where you're balanced out pretty well. But on the multi-streaming, I'm using the AV1 encoder off my graphics card, which is the 7900 XTX. And then I've got my bitrate set to 30,000, uh, keyframe 2, quality, that's the settings there. But I've got a plug-in from so, uh, Sora Yuki. All right, so this plug-in, uh, you, you can uh, you download for your OBS. And once you do that, you're going to have, under your docs, you're going to notice it will say uh, ta -ta -ta, multiple output. You're going to check that. This is going to bring up this box. Now you add a new target. I won't add a new one because I've already got it set up. But here is where you're going to put in your Twitch, um, whatever streaming. It could be uh, maybe you're logged into Twitch and you want to put YouTube here. I would recommend the other way around, especially with the newer graphics card, because we're going to utilize that encoder. Okay. So you're going to put in your stream key and all that good stuff in here, and then you can set up uh i'll show you how i've got it set up so here's what mine looks like here's my stream key um under the url you're for twitch you're gonna have like the um say mine's out of chicago i'm gonna have that address plugged in there but then i'm also gonna have my uh stream key attached to okay so then i've got uh 1920 by 1080 60 FPS, CBR, 7,500 bit rate, keyframe interval 2. I'm using my graphics card, or excuse me, my CPU for the encoding. So it's set to X264 slow, max B frames 2, hit OK. So now when I hit go live, it's going to instantly fire up both. Uh, oh, and that's the other part. There's a box here, sync, start with OBS, OK? You're going to have that. Uh, going so you if you check that when you hit go live on one it's going to go live on both okay so intel celeron uh two core one gigahertz with 4060 yeah that that'd probably bottleneck but you got to start somewhere i would rather have a little bit of a bottleneck and you know i mean hey it takes money to do all this stuff so if you're on a tight budget and you can do one thing at a time upgrade that cp the uh, graphics card first and, and you're going to limit your performance gain that you'll get from that graphics card by bottlenecking it. However, you will see an improvement. So 
far greater than if you left the graphics card the same and upgraded the CPU first. Um, you're just going to limit yourself more. So get the graphics card first. That, that's my recommendation on that. Go ahead and get that GPU, sort that out. And uh, something like this for 300 bucks, it's all you're going to need for streaming. I mean, if you're trying to play at 4K or 1440, really high frame rates and all that, then is this card going to be enough? Probably not. Okay. That's where you're probably into, uh, especially 4K, you're into like the 4080 Super, you know. You're into a $1,000 card versus a $300 card. Okay, so you did a stream for Twitch uh, on Twitch Studio for YouTube from YouTube Creator. That's OBS gives you. Oh, yeah. Um, the error is typically because um, Twitch does not allow AV1 encoding. Henceforth of why I'm using my processor um, to do X264 encoding. Because I... I my other card that I was using was a 7800 XT. It's a great graphics card. Okay. The problem is their encoder for X264 on AMD cards sucks. The quality is terrible. If I pulled up one of my old streams, uh, you're going to notice pixelation and all kinds of stuff. So, like, if I go to my uh, my lovely YouTube channel here, all right, so I'll just mute this so we don't get a bunch of feedback. But okay, so here's me playing Diablo Four. This is the um, this is the NVENC or excuse me, the AV1 encoder. All right, so if we pay attention to the quality, oh, oh, no, no, that's that's fine. We've all been new to it, and believe me, I've made a lot of mistakes and I've wasted a lot of money. So, um. The transcoding, that was the phrase I was trying to think of earlier. So here, 1440p, this is this is the quality of stream I get with AV1 with YouTube. Okay? Pretty good, right? Yeah, looks nice. So now I'm going to go ahead and go to my Twitch page. All right? So using software, X264. Software. Yeah, and X264. let me mute that because now we're good feedback and stuff. So I've got my live stream going right here. So here we go. Let's go. Uh, I'll go probably video producer. I could look at my old old stream. Okay. Here we go. So here's going to be the same the same stream. And I'm going to check my resolution. So it's uh, probably 1080. Yeah, 1080p source. Okay. And here's what Twitch looks like. Does it look quite as sharp? You know, if I if I brought them up side by side, you're going to notice it doesn't look quite as sharp. That's pretty acceptable. You know? And uh, if I go to one of my old streams, oh, God. I mean, that's it, it gets ugly. So let's go down here. Uh, dun, dun, dun. X264 medium. No, we need to go older. Let's see. Let's go even older. Cause I've been I've been doing this for a while. Okay. Here we go. All right. See any pixelation? Looks like crap, don't it? <laughs> um the ten the so the ten fifty TI um, the thing is, the 1050 Ti, I don't think that has the NVENC encoder, the original one. Go with the 1060. Spend just that little bit extra. I know the 1060 and 1060 Ti have NVENC encoding. So I would, if if that's, you know, roughly the price point where you can afford to get started, start with that. Okay? So you'll notice as I move, especially fast movement, You'll see that you'll see the pixelation. So that's what I was dealing with before I started doing the uh, 
X264 encoding with my CPU and, and upgrading my CPU. When you're sitting still, it looks fine, but as soon as you start running around in a game like Warzone, you see that pixelation everywhere. Um, so, with, let's, let's check on this here for you, okay? Because that's what we're all about. We're answering questions and educating people and helping people out, which I quite enjoy doing. Oh, yeah, here is my internet, 936 down, 931 up. It's It sucks to be me sometimes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Some of us got to rough it with fiber. You know, it's, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. Okay, so let's go to Newegg. The 1060, uh, it would be GTX. I, I know the 1050 does not have the, the better encoder. So, like, this would be probably the best starting point. Uh, also, I would have to check the um, the RTX 3050. It's not a great graphics card, but I think that one's... Okay, so... Mm, 3 gig. Uh, that one's used. Used, very good. Refurbished. Man, these are kind of hard to come by. Um, yeah. I would not pay three hundred. It you could buy a forty sixty for that price. So let's, uh, if you could find one, you know the the ten sixty would would definitely be the way to go. Let's see if they have the ten sixty Ti on here. They kind of like produced them, then stopped producing them, and it's like during COVID and everything, they went back into production again. You know, it was like okay. Uh, let's check the RTX thirty fifty. Because that'll have the that'll have the NVENC encoder, and that'll also the uh, yeah it'll have NVENC. The third the forty series will have the a the AV one encoder, um, but for for NVENC, you know something on the same lines as that ten sixty for instance. There you go, hundred and eighty bucks, and that has more VRAM. That's probably about the price you'd pay damn near for what you'd pay for a, a brand new 1050 Ti. So I would recommend this. That way you're into a 30 series card. You'll have the new NVENC encoder. The quality is going to be better. And the more important thing is the better the encoders, the less strain they put on your system. Okay. So that's really the big thing. That's why it's, it's so huge. The AV1 encoder it's using, I think it uses like 0.1% of my resources. If I wasn't streaming to YouTube right now, okay. Uh, so if I look here, my current deal, I'm using 3.4%. Oh, oh God, it jumped to, oh, there, 3.5% doing all this, you know, running two streams, my music, my OBS, my, you know, all this stuff, and it's using 3.5% of my system, multi-streaming. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, you'll find this number will stay nice and low with the newer encoders, and that's why it's a big deal. You can have less graphics card, and you're not going to lose 20% of your performance in game because you went hit go live. You might lose one or two frames, you know. It literally is to be so minuscule with the newer encoders, uh, it, it's going to really make it a lot nicer for you. You're not going to have, like, laggy gameplay because you hit go live. You know, that, that takes all the fun out of why we do this. We're gamers, right? Okay, okay. I mean, if if you can get it, you can get a 1060. The 1050 Ti, you're, gonna, you're at least going to have the original NVENC encoder, which is, is okay. But uh, if you could get in like a, um, I'd say the 3050, that, that's going to have the newer encoder. And you're going to be eh, not terrible, not terrible. If you can just go just a little bit more, I know your happiness level with your system would be that much greater. But, you know, at the end of the day, you get what you can afford, you know. That's that's all, that's what we got to do. I, I've got to do the same thing. How in the world I manage and a 7900 XTX graphics card. Well, you know, uh, it, it was it was a bit expensive. But uh, no, thankfully, uh, uh, my my job, uh, I can afford a few things here and there.
But my system's done now. Damn. So you know, anyone want to want me to build you a computer? You got to buy the parts, though, for the most part. I'll help you out with what I can. <laughs> I enjoy building PCs. It's like I'm so excited during the process itself. And then where it's, I hit the power button, everything works. It's like, hmm, we'll, we'll build another one, you know. So, I I mean, being a tech for Dell at one point in life and everything, I, I really enjoy uh, working on, on PCs and, and building gaming rigs especially. But I would say, you know, recommendation-wise, if someday you can get to where uh, it's in the budget to have Something like uh, an 8-core CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, a 4060. I mean, it's gonna be, it'd be a pretty awesome rig, and you'd be at about 1000 bucks By the time you bought, um, say, an M.2 for it, you know, your hard drive. And hard drives-wise, the streaming software and all that takes very little, so it's really how many games you're going to try to put on your machine. Um, I currently, if I look at my system... I've got quite a few games installed, and I have a 2-terabyte drive, an M.2, and a 1-terabyte. And so I've used up most of it. I have 327 gigs on my secondary drive and 213 left. You know, God bless Call of Duty because it's now like a 400-gig download or something stupid. Oh, how do you make the scenes? Okay, so I will admit that I do pay for uh, Streamlabs OBS's um, their um, their service, and then I import them into OBS Studio. I prefer the functionality of OBS, and they don't uh, the, with the multi streaming. I can't use Streamlabs, but I can utilize their software. So if I simply go into uh, my scenes and I go import, this is this is the uh, Here's the scenes that I currently have. So I went to import, and it I could do a scan, and it would find it on my computer. And, like, here's the name. I could check the box, and it'll import it in, just like I have things set up in Streamlabs OBS. So I set it up in one, and I transfer it to the other. Uh, and, like I say, that requires, uh, if you go to Streamlabs OBS, um, they have a – it's – it's not a lot of money, but there is a monthly fee involved. You can also uh, go to Owned 3D. You can uh, you can either pay for a membership or buy packages there. So that's that's how we get all this lovely stuff here. But this basic setup is through uh, Streamlabs OBS. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, ask as many questions as you want. Uh, good case for micro ATX. Okay, let me see here. I'm going to look right now. The nice thing is cases tend to be personal preference for the most part, you know. Um, now, my case is the uh, NZXT... HL6, I think it's called. And I, I love the case. It's It's got the glass. Uh, it's an all-glass front and everything. Well, let me go to... I'll go to Amazon here and see if I find your case on there. Now, small form factor cases are fine. Just keep in mind, if you ever wanted to add an internal capture card, because you're going to be doing some console streaming and this and that... Um, you might find it cramped. Um, so that's just a fair warning. If you're never going to do the capture card and stuff internally in your PC, then uh, micro ATX cases are absolutely fine. Let's see. XPG Invader X. Okay. Yeah, they, I was really struggling with Own3D myself. There are some videos on YouTube on that walk you through the process. Um, it's a bit more complicated than, than I like. Um, 
I just would just go Streamlabs OBS. Get them if you get a membership, for instance. It's not a lot of money, and I would just get the membership with them, and that's going to give you loads and loads and loads of uh, different options. There, there's hundreds of different overlay packages on there. Uh, you can also like um, if I go to my like if someone followed right now, even those alerts, you can even go in and set those up and all that good stuff too. Okay. So here's this um, mid tower case. Now mid tower is absolutely fine. Yeah, there there's loads of room uh, in this. If it's a micro ATX variant, if it's set up pretty much like this one, then yeah. This is going to be absolutely fine. This is very similar to to my case, honestly. Uh, I, I pretty much have the same setup to where it's glass on the front and the side, the fans coming in from the side here. Uh, the one thing I do have is in the bottom of my case, I have two 140-millimeter fans that blow direct up directly onto the graphics card because mine's a wider case. It's a dual-chamber case, so I don't have the power supply right right down here this case would be absolutely fine okay um mid tower would be preferred but if you have to go micro to atx to make it fit on your your surface um then then so be it honestly though if this case is 169 dollars i would go this route h6 flow here we go i think this is the one i have yeah, here's what I have, 93 bucks. So this is what I'm currently using. You can mount two 140s in the bottom. Uh, you can have an exhaust fan. It comes with the fans in the front, okay? Uh, this thing is available in black and white. It is a wider stance, though. The case is about 12 inches wide because it's it's dual chamber. So my my power supply is right back here. And the cooling on this thing is fantastic. I really like this case. Uh, all the panels come off easily. Uh, I have a 360 millimeter rad mounted in the top of my case here. Uh, and then I've, I've left the three up front alone. I had the two 140s and then I have a 120 millimeter exhaust fan in the back. And I really like my case. So the case that you uh, showed me is absolutely fine. If you have your heart set on that one, that's fine. Uh, but you can save a couple dollars and have a very similar case uh, that will serve you well. I, I mean, I've got a 7900 XTX in it, so. Okay, okay. Yeah, you've got no issues with space. <laughs> yeah. Now, myself, if I was going full tower, I, uh, I kind of like this one here. The, I think it's the 7,000D. 7,000D airflow. If I was going big boy case, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this this is to be the one that, that I'd probably get if I was going full tower, you know. Uh, simply because the, uh, I think you can mount, it's a 360 millimeter rad like on the side i think of this it's either that or the 5000 yeah okay yeah here we go so yeah you could put up to a 480 millimeter rad now where that would come into play is if you spent a whole bunch of money on a graphics card and it had liquid cooling like um msi makes the 4090 supreme and that has a 360 millimeter rad so you could mount your AIO grad in the top, and on the side here, you could mount your graphics card radiator. That would be kind of cool. But you're into a, a money pit at that point. You know, it's like, well, for only $6,000, I could build my dream PC, you know? <laughs> That'll break your desk. Yeah. I, I have my PC on the floor. I hate it, but I've got triple monitors set up. I've got a 1440p 32-inch monitor in the center. To my right is a 4K monitor that's a 60 hertz that was given to me. That's got my, my uh, Spotify, my OBS Studio, my Wavelink software, 
all that kind of stuff. And then the monitor on my left is a 1080p monitor uh, by Acer. Yeah, it's a really nice Acer. Honestly, it was it was like 130 bucks for it. The colors are really good on it. It's an awesome monitor. It's 180 hertz. It was cheap, you know, so I picked it up. And that's what I have my, my OBS studio is on a 180 hertz panel. You know, because you need high refresh rate for OBS, right? Makes perfect sense to have that. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> However, I was crazy enough in life at one point to have, um, I had three 27 inch monitors and I had them to where I did the, um, all one screen wouldn't work worth the shit for streaming. You'd have to have a couple other monitors connected to that. And it takes a lot of graphics horsepower to, uh, to do that. Cause you have to figure, you know, they were, uh, they were 1080 P monitors. Okay. So this way, yeah, they're 1080, but it was like 7,000, 8,000 pixels wide, you know? So it takes quite a bit. Okay. I'll tell you what water coolers. Okay. I talked about it earlier and I I've got just the ticket. It outperforms 99.8% of things on the market. Okay. The Arctic Liquid Freezer 3. You don't have to get the 360. Here's the 240. Here you go. This thing is awesome. And I'm betting that others, I'm sure it's fine, but this one is really, really good performance. $76.99, my friend. So if that's cheaper, I, I would go this route. They do have the RGB version if you want the pretties. It's it's not very a lot more for the RGB version. This is the one that I have right here. This is what's in my system. Let's see. Is it? Yep. This is exactly the cooler that's in my system, and it's pretty awesome. I'm very very pleased with it. So I I'd highly recommend. I got turned on to the Arctic brand by um, oh gosh, I gotta think of his name. Mm, damn it. I just watched one of his videos yesterday. Um, I'm, 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 I'm. Damn it. I can't think of their name. But uh, <laughs> one of the better sites to look at, at PC reviews and stuff and, and hardware information. Um, so, yeah, I got turned on by this other uh, these other people on this. And... The only thing that beats these coolers was the um, NZXT. Um, God, what is that? Man, I can't think of all of a sudden. Let's see. Kraken. The NZ, NZXT Kraken 360. And they had the fans cranked on 100%. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to look right now here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, hey, anywhere that you can save money on a build, that's more money to put in somewhere else to get that little better processor or that extra bit of hard drive or a better graphics card, you know. Um, yeah, anytime you can save a buck, especially with overclocking isn't really a thing anymore. I mean, I could and I have just to do it. I had all 16 cores running at 4.6 gigahertz on my PC. I could run it like that every day, but why? You know, it's just, it, it wouldn't make any sense with how programs utilize the cores and this and that. It just, um, it'd actually be a, a FPS loss in some games by doing that because what it typically does is, out of 16 cores, and I'm playing, say, Call of Duty, two of those cores are going to boost up to, like, 5.1. And the game's going to utilize those two cores. It doesn't need the other 14. It's only using these, these two. And so by doing an all-core overclock, yes, you, more cores are running consistently higher, but you're also using more power, producing more heat, and a lot of programs aren't even going to utilize any more than, like, two of those cores. So it, it really... It doesn't make a lot of sense unless you're like um, doing a lot of like video encoding, you know, like movies and things like that. 
if you were a filmmaker, it probably would behoove you to have all 16 cores, you know, with a, a overclocked. Okay, here we go. The master liquid. 120L. Let's see here. Okay. Fifty nine ninety nine. Um, if that's honestly, if that's all that will fit in your case is a a single one like that. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the really tiny um, coolers like that. It'll be kind of okay ish, but there are probably air coolers that would suit you actually perform better for that same price point honestly there the problem is with the with the small coolers like that they tend to heat up very quickly like think of it this way if you had a big spaghetti pot and you filled it halfway with water and you put it on your stove and you put it on low heat how long would it take for that water to come to a boil it'd probably take quite a while okay but now we take a little tiny saucepan, okay, little one, and we put it on the stove. We fill that half full of water, and we do the same thing. and put it on low heat. Which one's going to boil first? Okay, so that's where the small coolers, they tend to heat up much quicker. Um, and that's one of the really the key things of with uh, liquid coolers, it's the amount of time that it takes for them to even get to full temp. When you first fire up your system, you know, man, my my system's running at 60 C. That's awesome. But then two hours later, you look and it's 70 C and you're doing the same applications. That's because the liquid inside the coolers, it took it that long. It took like, say, two hours for it to get up to full temp. So for intermittent usage, you're, you're probably going to be lower temperature uh, overall so i would actually recommend a, an air cooler over like a single aio like that um a 240 is great if you can fit that in your case um i would have to say that uh i would probably in my honest opinion i would try to aim to have like this guy right here if it'll fit in your case 76 bucks you're talking $20, and this is going to wipe the floor with that other one, honestly, in performance. Yeah, the, the 240. The, yeah, a 240 is going to be fine. Yeah. So compare price of, like, say, that Cooler Master. Hey, if the other one aesthetically is like, wow, I like the lighting on that, you know, whatever the case might be. If it is it's aesthetically pleasing, they're all within a few Celsius of one another, so it's, it's fine. Um, the Arctic Freezer 3 versus 2. It did test six degrees Celsius better than the last gen, and they even lowered the price. So that's super cool. I always like it whenever something's cheaper and does a better job, you know. So that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I would do. I would not get the the single. Oh, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate you very very much. I I would definitely. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Flo. Um, I would definitely get something that, um, you know, like say it's it's like a 240. You know, uh, you're going to be much happier over the life of the of the computer, for sure. Uh, but you know, I like keep mine. If you're in a, on an AMD system, um, that's where it's self overclocking features. If you turn that on, it will tend to boost higher. That's why I have, well, since I have a 16 core CPU, that's why I am. Uh, I have a 360 millimeter, you know, big big cooler on there. But these, uh, you can't beat these Arctic freezers. They're they're fantastic, uh, especially 76.99. That's cheap, especially for what it does. You know, if you uh, if you go to hard, uh, Hardware Unboxed, that's where I was at. So if you go to like Hardware Unboxed and you look at their reviews and all that, it's just like, wow, that that thing's kicking everything's ass. You know, yeah. I appreciate you very much. So, um, yeah, if there's any other questions, feel free to ask. I hope I've been somewhat informative to you today. So I guess to kind of recap some things, um, 
So for a basic setup, ideally, you know, you got to start somewhere. So there's no there's no shame if your computer isn't up to these specs. I would aspire for an 8-core CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, an RTX 4060, um, some type of webcam, and like I say, gaming headset. This is where most of us started. I graduated into the Rode Pod mic, you know. Um, but, yeah, I started with this. Was it okay? Yeah, it was fine. It was fine. Was it quite as good audio quality, depending on the on the headset? You know, sometimes they kind of suck, and you sound like a... You get that nasally voice like an airline pilot. But uh, for the most part, hey, you know, this will get you talking to people. Any old webcam. Um, if you get some overhead lights, some like under uh, or under the counter lights, um, that, that they even you know, like attach those and put, put something on there to soften them, like using shower curtain, it works. Frosted shower curtain, if you just kind of drape it and create a little little like little Quonset hut for the for the light, it'll soften it really well. And that's I mean that's how I started. So if I I go to good old Google here, uh, let's see, I'll drag this over, get out of the way. I'll I'll go to wonderful Google and the photos again. I'll see if I can find a good picture of like my early days of lighting. But you know what? It did okay. It uh it was definitely better than than nothing for sure. Oh, thank you so much for the uh, for the follow. Appreciate you. Oh, wow. Do uh, donation. Jesus. Thank you very much. I appreciate you very much. Awesome. Well, that's that's pretty pretty badass. Thank you so very, very much. Um, I will say, though, um, oh, wow, yeah, donated to St. Jude's. Thank you so very, very much. Uh, that That means a lot. So I'm getting a little emotional here. <laughs> um, kids with cancer is my soft spot. They, um, they don't have the choice, you know, um, that we as adults, you know, we, I smoked cigarettes for 25 years. So if I get lung cancer, shocker, you know, <laughs> so yeah, here's, here's my original lighting setup. So these are under counter lights that I got from Walmart and I got a frosted shower curtain. And as you can see, I created these little, these little canopies around it. And you know what? It did a pretty good job. You know? Oh, okay. Sure, I can do that. So your lighting, I mean, something like this. I had them set up to where I had something on my side and then something out in front, and it's just trying to evenly light me. Uh, eventually, I got the Elgato key lights. They came shortly after. But, uh, I mean, I did this for several years. I, I used this light setup, and it, and it worked, you know? A little bit of an eyesore, but hey, it, it got the job done. Okay, let's uh, let's look this up here. I'll tell you, I really enjoyed working for Dell, but unfortunately, <laughs> the money sucked. Yeah, I, it it was bad. It, they were paying me so very little. It's like, oh my gosh, come on. Of course, they they promised great things, but it just it just never happened. Okay. Fractal, pop, silent. Okay, let's see here. Pop mini. Oh, okay, here we go. Okay. So, all enclosed, all right. Um, yes, it would definitely be silent as Enclose. Uh, let's let's see here. Let's see if I'm missing something here with this with this case. Maybe it's more mesh than I think it is. So let's uh let's check this out. This is where the Wavelink software. I've got the browser uh, audio selected to where I can mute. Unmute, you know, with, the, with this uh, Stream Deck Plus, it's it's pretty nice pet to have. Okay, okay. Um, I I like that one better with the full mesh front. So the mesh one right there, that that last one they showed, I like that one. What um, is the issue I have 
with this one is air doesn't like to make right angles, like right angle bends, okay? And so with this case here, yes, it would definitely be quiet. It's definitely, you know, not if you don't like flashy and stuff, this is very unassuming. However, um, the airflow, so what front fans are in it, is going to be pulled in through the side here. So that means the air has got to come in, make a hard right, and it wouldn't be great airflow. Um, to be fair, if your components don't tend to run super hot or anything, it'd be absolutely fine. Uh, if you were putting a lot of high end, very like, would I put a 14, 900 K in this case? No chance. It'll be like a toaster oven in there. <laughs> However, if you've got a, I don't know, you're running a, a 13, 600 K, those, those are half the wattage. Um, I will I will uh, say that the new Intel CPUs they call them 14th gen. They're not. They're really they're just 13th gen. It's the same architecture. They just managed to throw a little more wattage out of them to get another hundred megahertz or so. But they're they're nothing new. Okay, so that's the first thing. But Intel is currently trying to solve like when the CPU race by throwing lots of power to get the high clock. So go, look, we boost the 5.3, but they had to throw 400, 500 watts at the CPU to get it. So everyone always said, oh, AMD's toaster ovens are terrible. They'll heat your house in the winter. That's currently where Intel is. If you're going to have a 14900K, you need the biggest, baddest cooler you can get your hands on. You know, um, that's, that's a lot of the current Intel CPUs. Uh, so if you're going to buy a 14 gen Intel, anything above a 14, say 600, because those tend to be lower wattage, uh, you, you want the best cooler money can buy. That Arctic 360 or even a 480 version would be good. EK water blocks. Oh, I, I love EK water blocks. It's just, it's so expensive to set up water cooling. All right. So quick story here. I built my own, my own, uh, custom water loop one time but i might have taken it a you know, just just a micron too far okay i was working at an rv parts department yeah I'm, I'm not an intel fan if you couldn't tell i mean they're okay but you know just all those years like oh amd's a toaster oven and all that's intel now so yeah and and to be fair it's like the performance you get out of the amd stuff is fantastic but yes the story so we're at an RV parts department, and I decide I want I want a badass custom water loop, and I see an RV transmission cooler, and I'm like, I could use that as a radiator because I did pay attention to what metals these were made out of. Okay, because that's the thing is you don't want to mix steel or iron and copper. Okay, you don't want to mix your metals. You'll you'll get uh, it it. It just causes all kinds of problems, okay? So we don't want to mix our metals. So I found compatible stuff that was, um, it was all copper, okay? So I found this all copper RV transmission cooler. I think it's massive. And I used a half inch uh, EK water blocks uh, block on my, my CPU, half inch tubing, biggest you could get. <laughs> So this thing is a monster already. So I ran the tubes out of my PC into a mini fridge freezer where I had copper uh, or excuse me, clear tubing. I did use the, the just just clear, um, um, you know, like water tubing, uh, but it was like a thick wall so it wouldn't collapse. Um, so I. I had all this clear tubing like coiled up in the freezer. Well, I got an extra like 30 feet in there and the liquid had to spend oodles of time in this freezer. And I used an RV water pump. So like to be able to have all the sinks and, and shower and all that stuff going in an RV, I used that for my pump. The thing was so damn noisy that uh, I ended up mounting it outside. I literally drilled holes in the wall so I could run the tubing outside. And then it vibrated the entire wall. So here I'm trying to put like rubber grommets and stuff. Now, 
I will say I had a CPU overclocked. That was back before five gigahertz was really, you know, possible. I had a 2.4 gigahertz Q6600 Intel CPU overclocked to 5.2 gigahertz stable. And it ran at 39C under full load, 29 at 20, 24 at idle. It was ridiculous. So the performance was amazing with all this. However, it was noisier than sin. <laughs> There's no way you could leave your computer running and l overnight let it do updates or download something. Okay, it's it's fine. It's fine. You know, to, to be fair, all you need is enough CPU to where you're not bottlenecking your graphics card. Okay? So... A common thing is you don't buy a $1,000 graphics card and a $100 CPU, okay? We need a balance here, okay? Um, so, unfortunately, if you're, like, play with the big dogs, you're pretty much going to have, like, in my case, with the 5950X, I could have went with the 5900X. Uh, I did have a 5800X 3D that was in my system, but whenever I started doing the software encoding, for Twitch, that's where I went ahead and got the, you know, the more cores. But for pure gaming, if you want to aspire to something, the 5800X3D, it actually gets about, I've noticed about a 20 FPS drop um, in games with this CPU versus that 5800X3D. And it was, uh, this, it was half the cores that this one is. Because, like I say, games, they use maybe one, two, at the most, four cores. So what are the other, you know, you know what are my other 12 cores doing, you know? Well, in my case, they're, I'm, I'm really putting them through the paces to uh, encode everything without maxing out my CPU usage. Before I, um, playing Warzone, uh, I was at 100% CPU usage pretty much pegged all the time with that eight core. It went down to, um, I'm at like 27% now with the 16-core CPU. Henceforth, why I did it. I didn't want my CPU pegged at 100% all the time. But you do not have to spend a ton of money to have a good streaming rig. And just a mid-range CPU and... And like say like that I I know I keep saying the 4060, but I wish it had more VRAM. Honestly, if it, if I had to pick like for me personally, the lowest I would like to be for myself, um, I think the 47 uh, the RTX 4700 or 4070. I mean RTX 4070 Ti. Fine finally has uh, 12 gigs of VRAM. Jesus, I can't type. Let's check the 4070. I think it's only got eight, eight or 10. Okay, it's got 12 gigs. So, yeah, th this, for me personally, what's the worst CPU ever? Oh, God. I'm sorry, AMD. The, 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 bol the, the phenoms and the bulldozers, they were bad. The IPC, which is the instructions per clock, that's your single core performance. They were terrible. Intel was just wiping the floor with AMD back then. It was a lot of juice, a lot of heat for very little performance. But I still owned one because <laughs> I didn't want Intel. Yeah, I had I had the Phenom. Yeah, I mean it. It, it just was so far behind Intel's. <laughs> Yeah. So that one for me, I'd say the old Phenoms or the Bulldozer, those, yeah, they weren't great. Did they work? Yeah. You could play games with them and stuff. It's not like you they didn't function. But, yeah, Intel was like three times better on their uh, IPC at the time. It, it was bad. <laughs> yeah. But I sure had fun trying to overclock that thing and make it better. Oh, God, yeah. So one issue I will discuss with everyone is, all right, 
So, no, oh yeah, and if I didn't say this already, do not ever buy a PNY graphics card. I repeat, never buy a PNY product. They are freaking garbage. If you look at this thing, uh, let's see if they improved like the overall. No, no, it, it doesn't look sturdy. Um, so here I am testing these PNY graphics cards for Dell because Dell had a contract with PNY naturally because they were the cheapest. And uh, you would pick this. It was a. It was like twenty eighty Ti's, and you pick this thing up, and when you handle the exterior of it, the the, the shroud for the fan, you felt like they were gonna snap. I mean, they were so thin and flimsy. And then I literally had two of them catch fire and see fire coming out of the external power connectors. So let's see. Let's let's find here. Uh, let's see where I, 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 man, they're hiding them on me. I want to see the side of the card. So yeah, like right, right here. There, imagine flames shooting out of that portion of the graphics card, and it absolutely wrecked the motherboard. Uh, yeah, it actually it wrecked the motherboard that it, I had it in, and it wasn't a cheap one. It was um. Like Dell's Alienware top of the line, uh, the 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 uh, triangular shaped computer case. You ever see those? Yeah, it was a motherboard that was out of one of those. Uh, they're okay. They're okay. I I I never really had any issues with them. Uh, it's just the the worst defender was PNY. So I yeah I I'd be okay with the palette. That's that's absolutely fine. Um, most brands I don't really have a problem with. It's just, it's PNY. Just, just for love of God, don't, don't get a PNY. Now, if you want to, like, if I was going to take a moral stance, I would not buy an MSI graphics card simply because during the pandemic, um, they were really scamming. They, uh, they had a, um, their sister company, um, that they owned, uh, buying up all the graphics cards off of their website and Amazon and all that and reselling them at scalper prices. So they were essentially buying their own product from themselves under a different company name so they could scalp it and triple and quadruple their profits. So myself, is MSI my first choice? No. If I could, if that's all I could afford was an MSI, they're, they're, the cards are fine. It's just their business practices are like, really. So I, I, I say P and Y is the only one I'm like, eh. I'm not sure about Yeston. Okay, they're the new ones on the block. They, you know, like all cards, they are Chinese made. So. I don't know enough about Yeston at this point. A friend of mine did did buy a Yeston graphics card, and it just his performance seemed to be awfully limited, even though it it was supposed to be a full spec card. I'm sure if we didn't look, if we we wouldn't have to look too hard to find a Yeston. But what I was gonna say, I guess, is about the 4070 of why I would choose it if I had the budget for it. If I could afford the five or five hundred and fifty dollars, um, this one's six forty. But if I if I could afford this guy right here, this forty seventy super, which would be the better choice anyway. Uh, if I could afford that, the reason I would go with that over the forty sixty is the twelve gigs of VRAM. A lot of the uh, PC ports from like PlayStation games, um, they don't transfer that well. So if you've got like uh, the the Last of Us is is a common example. Um, the Last of Us utilizes like all twelve gigs of that VRAM are just getting taken up by that that game alone. If you don't have at least twelve gigs, they it plays like crap. Well, imagine now you're trying to stream also. Okay, so yeah, um, that that makes uh, that makes a big difference. Um, I know the new encoders are not very hardware intensive, but uh, I mean you're at the thing's already at max. So how do you go above above that without seeing some kind of performance dip somewhere? You know, either your stream's going to suffer. Oh, 
And for the new people, what you want to do, all right, so if I go over here to, oh, I don't know, my, uh, my Streamlabs OBS, since I have OBS Studio running right now, I'll go Streamlabs OBS, all right? This is a big one. So Streamlabs OBS, if you right-click on it, we want to prioritize our streaming software. Okay, now you've got this run it as, as administrator button that you can hit. You always want to run your streaming software as administrator because it's going to put it first in the pecking order above the game. So maybe you saw an extra one FPS drop in your in your game while you were playing it, but you didn't get drop frames in your stream. Okay, so I always prioritize that. If you go um, properties, okay. And then you go to the Advanced tab, Run as Administrator. I didn't have this one set up that way yet. So you check that, boom. Okay. So you want to make sure that any of these options that you have, so Shortcut, Run as Administrator, we want to have all these checked. Okay. If you have an option of running that thing, giving it Administrator permissions, you're going to be better served by doing that. Uh, so that's going to, like I say, it's going to prioritize uh, your streaming software. Okay. Well, so I don't miss out on the complete day with my daughter. Um, I am going to get off here pretty soon. But um, I do want to say thank you for joining me. And do you have, does anyone have any further questions uh, that, that you'd like to get answered before we, we have to go? You have my my full attention, uh, Mister Deranged. Um, he is also a streamer as well. Um, he's pretty knowledgeable too. You know, he, he's he's pretty good. So, um, but yeah, I I've been building computers. I'm 48. I've been building them since I was 12 years old. I was a tech for Dell for nearly two years, and unfortunately, they just. Uh, they they paid me very very little money to do that job, so eventually I just uh, I had to give up on on the dream of of doing that and uh, and go, go make some money. But I I love talking about computers. I could do this all day. I could answer questions all day. I'm more than happy. I love love to help people out. So uh, any any time uh, if you want to. Send me a, a message uh, to my channel and ask questions. Uh, you can definitely catch me while I'm streaming. Hopefully, I did a reasonably good job of explaining what you need. So, recommendation. Yeah, like, here's my list. You don't need all this, okay? Is it nice to have the Stream Deck Plus? Yeah. I would say if you wanted something that would make the biggest impact to your stream and and just your quality of life while you're streaming, okay? We get rid of all this. We get rid of all this here, okay? All right. So, I mean, we don't we don't even have this. The uh I would definitely say Gaming headset, OBS, game console. Well, okay, we'll even take this off the list because we'll, we'll just take that out of the equation because now you're into capture cards as well uh, with game consoles. Um, so here's our basic setup. In fact, we're just we're going to take the 16 cores off there. So we've got an 8-core CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, a 4060, a webcam, a gaming headset, OBS Studio, or Streamlabs OBS for your software. If you're doing YouTube streaming, Please use OBS Studio and take advantage of the better encoders, the AV1 encoder. If you're a Twitch streamer, um, then Streamlabs OBS is absolutely fine because they don't support AV1 encoding with their software, nor does Twitch. So it really isn't going to make any difference at all. Okay, so uh, the one thing I would add is the Elgato Stream Deck Deck Plus. So, boom. That is what I would add. If you wanted that one quality of life thing that you're going to add into the equation because you can, th this software 
is pretty amazing, okay? Uh, of course, I made it too big. Okay, so, yeah, as far as the level, you'll notice I'm going to get quieter and quieter and quieter to the stream and all that. This is the output to the stream. Now I'm going to get loud again. So you have a slider for what you hear in your ears versus what the stream hears. So I can set music here to say I'm normally about 55%, and normally myself previewing it, I'm at about 40%. But I can dial that in without messing with my settings for the stream. Um, if you do elect to do something like this, start out at about 50% for your output volume. Um, you're going to have all your games and all that stuff, you're going to have the volumes at 100%. You're not going to have them at like 10%. You're going to crank them up, and then you're going to adjust how you hear it, how the stream hears it uh, right here in the software. You'll hear it real time in your ears, and you'll know what your stream hears. So it's pretty pretty amazing software to have. And Flo, thank you so very much for, for donating to St. Jude's. Um, my brother passed away from cancer. Uh, it's been about three years ago now on New Year's night. So, yeah, that's that's definitely uh, a cause that I, I try to be a champion for. And like I say, kids kids don't have a choice, okay? They, they didn't smoke cigarettes and drink alcohol and do all these things and go to work in asbestos-filled factories and, and all these things. So it's not fair for them that, that they they end up with that illness. They, they didn't do anything to deserve it. Like I say, if I get cancer someday, you know, I, 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 I earned it, you know, but, but kids don't. So, um, thank you so very, very, very much. Um, all the money that gets donated to St. Jude's goes straight to them. I'd never see it. And a hundred percent of the proceeds go towards the cause. Okay. So thank you once again. And I think I'm going to get the heck off off of here and have some family time unless anyone has some questions. Um, so anything left before I go? Um, if you want to ask any questions about streaming stuff while I'm game streaming, I'll be more than happy to, to carry on and give you my opinion on things. Um, cases, I like airflow. Um, the pretties are nice, but I always uh, prioritize airflow and do a lot of homework before I buy a case of, um, I check like, uh, gamers nexus. That was the site I check all the time. Um, a lot of times they have really good reviews and they show noise levels and temperate average temperature and they, they do a really good job testing stuff. So I would send you, I would encourage you to go to gamers nexus, uh, for, uh, different hardware tests, uh, monitors before I go. Yes, I have three monitors. It does not matter what resolution your monitors are, okay? Twitch accepts 1080p. Um, so if you're a Twitch streamer, you're going to be downscaling it to 1080p anyway. Um, and if you've got a 4K monitor, a high refresh rate and all that, you probably have a pretty big badass computer to, to power it. So, I mean, you're probably not going to have an issue with uh, the encoding and all those things anyway. So... Uh, but yeah, it it's monitors or personal preference. I will say, if you're playing at 1080p, and we'll just stick with NVIDIA products because most people are most familiar with those. If you're a 1080p gamer, um, a four, uh, the 4060 is going to be absolutely fine. I would avoid the 3050 unless that's your only option. Okay, if that's all you can afford and that's the difference between you playing games and not, I'd rather you enjoy yourself and play some games. But uh, it's it's not a great card. It's It'll get the job done, but uh, for, for 1080p, um, I think a lot of games it gets like 20, 30 FPS on high settings. So you definitely have to tone your settings down to medium or low graphics. Um, but it'll get you playing games. Uh, but yes, 1080p, the 4060 is fine. The 40, uh, at 1440p, the 4060 is okay. That's where the 4070 is the better fit for 1440p. Um, but it would be on the struggle bus for 4K. And when you get into 4K, that's where you're into, I would say, probably the 40, 4080 Super, the 4090. 
those are really your two best options. Obviously, the 4090, but who has uh, $2,000, I think, there? Let's see. We're not going to say that. Let, let's see. Just just for giggles. You know, if somebody out there is independently wealthy and and wants the wants to pick me up, uh, you know, one of these four. I don't need it, but my roommate's got one. So, you know, got to compete with, with him, right? And, you know, if somebody wants to get, oh, this, yeah, yeah. I mean, for the low, low price right here of only $1,900. I mean, that's a deal. If somebody wants to get me one of those, you, you I mean, I wouldn't be upset. Just saying, wouldn't be upset. I, it it would get a it go to a wonderful home, and would get used a lot. Even though I absolutely don't need this card, but I would use it because it wouldn't it would actually be an upgrade over my seventy nine hundred XTX in some games. Just saying, you know. <laughs> all right, everyone. Thank you all so very very much. Once again, Flo, thank you for the donation. I thank you. The kids thank you. And uh, I will catch everyone later. It's time to have uh, some family time with my daughter and stuff. And get some food. I'm hungry. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in today. I really appreciate you. Uh, okay, any more questions? Going once. Going twice. Uh, okay, I guess not. All right, I've been Grudge. You've been great. Thank you once again. And uh, feel free to hit me up on either Twitch or YouTube if you have any future streaming or hardware questions. I'll be more than happy to help you and, uh, and try to give you some of this uh, knowledge I've accumulated over many mistakes. Because I, I can't even imagine. I probably wasted two dollars 3000 on stuff that really didn't impact my stream. You know, So, yeah, I, I try to help people avoid doing that. And uh, I, I, I make every dollar count, you know. So we get what you need, you know, not not overdo it. All right, I better go. All right, thanks, everyone, once again. I appreciate you, and you have a fantastic uh, Saturday. Yeah, it's Saturday. And uh, I'm going to be doing some game streaming tonight, so uh, feel free to uh, pop in, say hello, have a cold one with me because, you know, a, a beer actually sounds pretty good tonight. All right, I'll catch you all the next time. Thank you once again. Good night, all. Or afternoon. <laughs>